Congressman George Santos says he will not seek re-election this year, that next year, surprise, surprise, stating his family, quote, deserves better than to be under the gun from the press all the time as if it's the press's fault. The New York Republican posted those comments on social media yesterday after the House Ethics Committee released a damning report concluding there is substantial evidence he violated federal criminal laws, including using campaign funds for personal purposes and filing false campaign reports. Joining us now, Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wilde of Pennsylvania. She is the ranking member of the House Ethics Committee. Congresswoman, what, what are your Republican colleagues saying to you about George Santos in private? Well, it's interesting. I mean, because it's a, you know, the Ethics Committee is completely bipartisan, an equal number of Democrats and Republicans. And so we've obviously had plenty of time to be talking about this over the months. Um, and I'm pleased to report that at least the Republicans on the committee are equally appalled um, with us at, about his conduct. And frankly, I think all of us on the committee would have liked to have him out much sooner. Um, but I have to, I really have to say that it was an intensive investigation um, and mounds and mounds of evidence that was reviewed to put together that report. So. Your uh, Republican counterpart's going to bring a privilege resolution, I think, to expel George Santos when you all return in December. The last time there was a vote on expelling him, though, a number of Democrats voted against that. Do you think that's still going to be the case now that your report is out there, now that they have the allegations? In the I, I don't believe it will be the case. Actually, um, the chair of the committee, a Republican, is bringing his resolution today. I've just learned he's not bringing it as a privileged resolution. Okay. A privileged resolution has to be brought up within two legislative days. But so one wonders why you mm. wouldn't bring it as a privileged resolution, but my, I, any, but any other member can make it a privileged resolution. And so that will happen for sure. Yeah. Since it's being made today, the soonest we will be able to vote on it is Wednesday after Thanksgiving, because mm -hmm. we return on Tuesday uh, after Thanksgiving. Congresswoman, we've seen this. And yes, I, sorry. Oh, good. I do the believe Democrats that will be the re Democrats who voted united. against it, mm -hmm. I've spoken with them. And a couple of the Republicans who had voted against it. Did they vote against it because they weren't? They wanted to wait until your committee was finished with his work. Some, yes. Some were concerned about whether due process had mm -hmm. had been given, and they wanted to see the report and what was contained in it mm -hmm. in order to be convinced. Congressman, as you referenced, it's a bipartisan committee, and and there was there's been Republicans who've actually spoken out about George Santos, which I will just say in a moment where there's not a lot of light in Washington, that feels like a good sign. Mm -hmm. Is your sense that any of them are also willing to speak out against, say, Donald Trump yeah. and others and their language that I would say, venture to say, is more damaging than George Santos? I think mm. the, the people on the other side who are willing to speak out against Donald Trump have already done so, mm. and you're not going to see any mm -hmm. new um, comments on that. George Santos made it very easy for people to mm -hmm. speak out, quite frankly, because his conduct is so out, was so outrageous, is so outrageous, and um, there was so much overwhelming evidence. And quite honestly, the voters were demanding that we do something about George Santos mm -hmm. being in Congress. But you're not going to see that, I don't think, um, unless something radical changes that I don't even foresee. No hope quite yet. Okay. <laughs> so, Congresswoman, let me ask you a Pennsylvania question. Sure. Um, there have been a lot of calls for Pennsylvania to do what Florida does and other states do which is count the votes early. Mm -hmm. And by counting the votes early, that when the polls close, you have all of the mail-in ballots, everything done, everything counted. And there were people saying before, including people around this table, that because of Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, and Wisconsin's voting laws, that Republican legislatures wouldn't change, that Donald Trump is going to be able to do exactly what he did. Is Pennsylvania fixing that? So like Florida, when the po polls close, we'll know by 9 o'clock at night who won the state of Pennsylvania. Well, it would be lovely if so. In Pennsylvania, our state legislature, much like Congress, has a very narrow majority, although in Pennsylvania, the Democrats have the majority. Um, and my understanding is they're working on it, but I don't think you're going to see it fixed before next election. Uh, why not? And I don't know. It, I, I wish it would be. It's crazy. You don't have to, rev and you wouldn't, reveal what those votes are tallied. But the amount of time that it is taking for election offices in every county to get done. Some counties are better than others. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. It, it, we should know by midnight on Election Day what the results well, are. And, and, you know, Pennsylvania is not the worst. In Arizona and Nevada, they count two votes a day 
for like six six months afterwards. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. But if the state legislatures had done in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan what people were asking them to do, mm-hmm. 2020 wouldn't have happened. We exactly. would have known who the president of the United States was by 10 o'clock that night. And I will say things have improved in Pennsylvania since 2020 because um, the state legislature it has given additional monies to voters' offices to do certain improvements right. and that kind of thing. So 22 was not nearly as delayed as 2020. Yeah. So I'd like to think that we'll be done by, I don't know, 10 o'clock on, you know, next November. But right. I, I don't know. And I don't know that you will actually see. We're having a lot of trouble getting consensus on changing, improving election laws in Pennsylvania. we need to bring Pennsylvania. Governor Shapiro on the show. Yeah. We'll see what he's <laughs> well, I, I'll give him a shout out. He, he can get it done and he's great. Yeah. He's a great governor. And I hope that I he's able to to get the legislature. Let's hope that. so. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Stop having so much fun in the minority. <laughs> We're on to you. You're kind of enjoying I'm watching them. I would hate the minority, yeah. but, you know, I'd rather be in the minority right now. It's a it show is. every day, isn't yeah, it? it? Oh, is. my it Lord. Is. All right, Democratic Congresswoman Susan Wilde of Pennsylvania, thank you so much. Come back. 